The first step in printing these parts is to export them as STL files. We will open the tip up. We'll go to File, Save As, and save a copy. And we change the type to STL. And we say Customize Export. And hit OK. And then over here, it, these are the, the numbers that control how finely faceted the part ends up being. To make it as finely faceted as it can be, you want to change this to zero and then click in this box. And then it, it takes, it, it figures out what the smallest possible number is that it will accept and puts it in there. And then you change this one to zero and then you click in this box and then it, it puts it to zero. And then when you hit OK, it will export at the at the finest resolution as that it can. And then when it displays it with this funky colored wireframe on it, that is the representation of the STL file that got exported. And then you make it look normal again by hitting repaint. So that file has been saved in my directory. And then we're gonna go to the base and do the same thing. So we go to file, save as, Stereolithography, export, and zero, zero, and hit OK. So now that one has been exported also. So we are done with Creo now, and the next steps happen in Prusa Slicer. In Prusa Slicer, I'm going to open up the project that I used to print the previous blades. We'll do the base first. So this was my previous base. So when I print these, I position them on the bed so that the trailing edges of the blades just touch, just barely touch, the surface of the neighboring blade. And the reason I do that is so that when they're sitting on here as a structure, they support each other because these are super tall parts. And if they don't have external support, sometimes they'll pop off the bed. I also add some modifications to the bottom of the blades so that the blades start off with an infill of 20%. Then in this area, they have 10%. And then the rest of the part has 5%. So if I hit slice and it's processing, this is what the old parts looked like when they printed right in this area they just barely touch each other when it slices these you'll notice that in the previous view they like really went into each other but in the sliced view the layers don't go as far and that's because the other blades they tapered down to almost nothing but when you look at it with the width of the the printer nozzle um, it can't go to nothing. It only goes down to as wide as the nozzle. So this is what it looks like when it's printing. And if I take this handle here and drag it down, you'll see what those layers look like. Up near the top, it's sparsely populated. And when it comes down, this is where this is the area where the blades are touching each other. So I position them so that they just come in here and, and kiss the surface of the other blade. And it, they interfere, like down here, they don't touch. And then up in this area, this is where they start to touch each other. And then as they print, they'll be supported until about here. And then from this height on, they're independent again. And that gives you a solid print that is sort of it's anchored at three points on the bottom um, it, it's self-supporting in the middle and then it grows out of the top when this is all printed you can take an exacto knife and just very carefully score this this intersection and then you can break these parts apart i started a new project in prusa slicer my settings over here are 0.3 millimeter layer height i'm using three perimeters the printer that i'm using is my prusa mark 3s with an mmu on it but it's just doing a single color because this is the base there's no supports and there's five percent infill i'm going to import the stl file for the base 
So that comes in laying down. We're going to stand it up first. Stand it up. Let's look at the top view like this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some modifiers to this part so that the infill percentage is higher at the bottom where I'm gripping it. So the way I do that is right click on this and say um, add modifier and we're going to make a box. Okay, so let's stretch this box until it lines up with the blade down here. Um, if we take this thing and scale it, let's make it big and long. We'll make it a little bit wider. And now let's rotate it around until it lines up with the part and we'll move it. We'll move it over here like this and then we'll move it up and back over so that it encompasses the whole blade. So now that that's in place, if I go over here to the settings of this box, we change the infill percentage to 20%. Well, let's slice it and double check. So let's slice it. And then if I grab the handle and pull it down, we should see the infill percentage change. So right now it's 5%. And then when we hit down in this area, there it goes. Now it's 20%. But that's a pretty abrupt change. So let's put another layer on top of it. So this region will be 20 and then will be 10 on top. We better check and make sure how high this little box thing is. So the size is 25 millimeters tall. So let's come back and create another, another modifier, make it a box. Um, we'll change the Z position. We'll add 25 millimeters to this. Oh, so this arrow is pointing in a different direction. These modifier boxes are weird. They, they don't have the same dimensions or they don't have the same directions as some of the other stuff. Um, so this, instead of negative 75, let's make it negative 50. There, so it's shifted up in that direction. And now we'll stretch it and move it like we did with the other one. So we'll stretch it, we'll make it a little thicker. We'll rotate it around like that, and then we'll move it. There we go, we'll move it into position. Does it cover the whole part? It does. And just for the fun of it, let's shrink it back down so it's not sticking way out like that. I'll shrink it like this and then we'll move it again a little bit there for this one we're going to change the infill percentage to 10 percent and if I say slice now we should end up with a part that up at the top is five percent infill down here it transitions to ten percent infill and then down in here, there it goes to 20% infill. So now we need to make more of these. We need three blades total. So I'm going to go back to this tab and right click on this and change the number of instances to three. Okay, now we're gonna drag the first instance over in this area. The second instance we're gonna rotate by 120 degrees and we're going to move that one over here get it out of the way and then this one we're going to rotate it 240 degrees you need to get them kind of close to the position that you want and then you move them as a group let's select all of them like this we'll move them as a group come on there so that they're kind of in the middle of the bed and now if I hit slice now, we'll see what they look like when they're sliced. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with these positions there. So it just barely touches like right in here. And right now, like this is where it just barely touches. But if I move it in so that it pokes into it a little bit, when I slice this, it trims off a little bit of the back of the part. So if I take my handle and I move it down about halfway, and I hit the number key one so that I'm looking at the top of the part and zoom in here. Let's move 
part number two, that's instance two, a little bit to the left so that it starts to touch here. So we're, I'm going to keep on tweaking this until it looks right. And I will probably not make you guys sit through my tweaks. Okay, we're back. So now this one just touches down here. Up here, this one just touches right there. And here, they just touch right here. When I run my handle up and down, let's drop it down. So they stop touching each other right around, let's say about there is where they, uh, they're just starting to touch. And then from layer 284 up to layer about right here, about 355, they're touching each other. And then above that, they come free again. So everything is away from the edges of the print bed. And I should be able to print these parts with no supports like this. And it's going to take almost 17 hours for this print to run. So it's important that you get this pretty darn right before you go. Um, if these parts should happen to break free or come off, you've wasted a lot of time. Uh, so now that this thing is all set in place, I'm going to hit export G-code and save it. And then I'll take it down and get it started on my printer. And sometime tomorrow, I'll be able to take these parts out and run the tip.